Rhonda Williams Pier Wait. How are Rhonda you doing today? Hi, good, <laughs> thank you. How are you? How are you? I'm surviving my evil neighbors that live above me right now, stomping. But <laughs> yes. <laughs> We've had loads of people having the same problem with their neighbors above but neighbors. It's extraordinary. Here was like they the neighbors on the side of me, they blast music at eleven o'clock at night during the week. And then my neighbors above me stop until three in the morning. It's just oh my God. nightmare. I've learned Hell. So one of the first questions that I wanted to ask you is something that really stuck with me in chapter 10 of season four. And Philip, who is the shadiest character of the entire season, I just love the shade that he throws to everyone. But um, he talks to your character, Emma, um, saying that everyone in the system is a lost, lonely, irrelevant outsider. And I'm paraphrasing. Um, and there's only one person that matters. And the problem that you have is you seem wow. to not who that person is and that hit me and it really made me wonder um do you think that your characters were naive to think that their own personal happiness and their duty to themselves to be happy in life do you think they were naive for thinking that that could truly happen and Emma we can start with you that's such an interesting question and I love that you picked up on that because I think that is such an emotional scene and I think really really comes to the crux of what Diana was dealing with which was basically, she was not cut out, I don't think, for a system which was all about duty. And in a way, in a very in, inhospitable, very inhumane kind of way, I don't think they were naive. I don't think you can call it naive to not think that you're happy, you should be happy or your happiness doesn't come first. I think that that is a very natural thing to want. And I think that the system that they were existing in is incredibly flawed and incredibly difficult. And, you know, the whole se series is about how all these different characters struggle within that system. Um, but yeah, I think in some ways, maybe some people are, can, are cut out for it and some people aren't. And I just don't think, Diana was a people person. She was expressive. She loved to give and take and connection. And that didn't, couldn't work in that world um but yeah such an interesting question yeah I mean and Josh for you because your character has seen this like he's seen this with his his uncle he's seen this with his aunt and yet you know for a moment he thinks that like hey like my feelings matter so I mean what do you think for Charles in this situation yeah I think you're spot on I think there's um uh yeah there's both Diana and Charles ultimately want to be happy and live mm. fair, you know, as normal a life as they can. Um, particularly, I mean, the kind of the big sort of the big thing in, in our story is that, um, you know, there is this kind of, I think it's very interesting from Charles' perspective and only sort of looking back now, do I think that he sort of wants to just be happy and, um, and to be kind of normal. But actually, I think there's a big part of him that would also really like to be recognized and heard and have a voice. Um, mm. And what I think he struggles with the fact that Diana is, as Emma said, is the people, but she's the one that people fell in love with. And he's the kind of yet, you know, yet again, left behind a little bit. And I think he struggled. I think, again, in our world, I have no idea about real Charles, but in, in our story, it's kind of, yeah, I think he finds it really hard mm. that, um, you know, in series three, we've got like, um, he's he's literally begging his mother to have a voice, to be seen. When he has the investiture, no one congratulates him. There's no kind of big praise or party. And then he married, he has the big wedding and it's all about Diana. And, he, and gradually she becomes this, uh, you know, as lots of people have been saying today, she was the most iconic person in, in modern history. Um, and that's really that's pretty hard for someone like Charles, who, you know, is waiting to be king and he's not king. And then uh, this unbelievable woman comes over. I think I think he finds that pretty tricky. So, yes, I do think that he just wants happiness. But there is a I think there's like an underlying thing of like you also quite like to be photographed and seen and sort of do you know what I mean, I think there's a little bit of that. Well, thank you both so much for taking the time to speak with me. I truly appreciate it. Have a great Thanks, day. Of course. Cheers. Thank Thanks. you so much. Bye.